What's good, man? What's good? What's good? What's good? Real quick, real quick. I got to actually sneak and do this video, so I'm going to do it so quick. You ain't going to have time to do nothing. You got to stay tuned, stay focused. But hold on, hold on. Let me take some time out to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed, follow this little red box down here at the bottom somewhere and just click it. Then you will be subscribed. You'll be able to keep up with what's going on. But listen, man, real quick. I got this Chrysler 300 2012 model. I just did the recall on it. The alternator recall. It's nothing new. It's been out for a couple of years now, man. Uh, what's going on is the diodes are failing in these. And uh, this rapid diode failure is occurring. And, uh, you know, people are being shut down all over the road. Just random car just battery eventually die out and the car just quit because the alternator is not charging it properly the way it's supposed to. Like I say, that's nothing new. But what's unique about this particular car like I said, I'm not really covering the recall as so much as I'm covering the danger of not getting the recall performed in a timely fashion. In other words, sitting on it until you find time to do it. You got to keep in mind, man, recalls are free. So when you find out one's available or you get the letter in the mail from Chrysler, you should act on that immediately. Immediately, because you're not doing nothing but eventually, essentially, uh, ruining other parts, such as your battery. You make it save your battery, but if you sit on it too long, this alternator study continue to give its charging priorities to the battery and the battery will essentially fail. You're doing yourself a disservice. So the issue I have with this car is, of course, it's dead. I go out there to get it. I put my trusted, faithful jump box on it that's been good to me for years. And the minute I put it on, here's what happened. I put the black on black, red on red. <laughs> A big old spark occurs. I'm going, whoa, maybe I got them reversed. And I verified what I did. And I looked on the battery red, looked on the battery black, looked at the clamp red, clamp black. I put it on there again. <laughs> now keep in mind, this car is dead already. So what I do, whoa, no more, no more of this. So I eventually wind up pushing the car in. But the second time I go to use my patented jump box, it's no longer good. It's no longer working. So I basically destroyed my jump box with this car only thing i can come up with is uh that battery is so bad it's reverse polarity if that's the word i mean it's it's so bad that the alternator now i unplugged the alternator you know at the dial connector and put my jump box on there and there was no spark so it's some kind of back probe and back feed now that that ruined alternator that's back probing through the battery and uh eventually ruining everything is touched as far as trying to uh, uh, start and crank the car. Just say hypothetically, uh, this car quit on you on the road and you get somebody to give you a jump box <laughs> and they use battery cables instead of this, you will eventually reverse polarity back pro that back to their car and probably ruin that car. That's why a lot of people are skeptical about giving people jump starts using battery cables. Back in the day, that was popular. You. Uh, Somebody need a jump start, a boost, you simply grab out your cables and give them a boost. But not so much these days. It's not really wise. You got to be it's like a super nice guy to go through with it or be very cautious when you're doing it. Because really what you should do is put it on real easy. If you see a hot spark, then yeah, you got some something going on. You shouldn't really jump that car. But like I say, this video is not really on the recall, although it concerns the recall. Uh, I ruined my jump box, man. I haven't had this jump box almost a year. I'm working perfect. Now it's gone. I don't know. Now what should Chrysler pay for my jump box? I can give it a shot. I doubt it, but I was gonna try. But um, uh, the more I guess the moral of this video, if you your recall apply, if you have a recall on your car, and get it done as soon as possible. Okay, you don't want to be on the side of the road, not able to start, and you're gonna scare people into giving you a jump start. To get you started so you're going to be essentially left out there on your own so my warning to you is get the recall if you don't know of your car like i say this is 2012 300 with a 36 in it it's been out for a while but if you don't know if your car has a recall on it leave me your vn i'll check it for you i got some uh you know chrysler powers the way i can check and see if your car have a recall on it and i suggest you go get it done that's it man that's all i have man i like to keep my subscribers Notice what I said, subscribers up to task and up to date on uh, what's going on and the little things that I find. Because it's only so much I can tell you. I can't really make a lot of repair videos because I'm uh, constrained to, you know, 
working in a shop so not my own shop so to speak so uh thanks for watching man comment and subscribe and um uh, i got some more tips man like i said i need you to subscribe and click that notification so you'll know when videos come out and i will see y'all on the next video